I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. I cannot be defeated and I will not quit. Welcome to Rama Praise, a worldwide broadcast bringing hope, help, and healing for over 20 years from Kenneth Hagen Ministries and Rama Bible Church in Broken Arrow, Oklahoma. And now, here are your hosts, Pastors Kenneth and Lynette Hagen. Hello and welcome once again to Rama Praise. We are so glad that you have tuned in today. Yeah. Well, honey, you know, one of the things that we make sure that we don't do is to throw away our confidence and faith in God. Yeah, our confidence, our faith in God's Word. Yes. You know, no matter what happens, you've got to stand firm in your faith in what God said in His Word. Now, some people... Uh, they don't step into faith because they can't see the final destination. That's right. Well, when you take off on a trip, you can't see the final destination. No. You know it's out there, but yes. you can't see it. You got to get, and you know that when you believe God for something, that you will receive it. Yes. You know, Dad used to say this all the time. Step out over the aching void of nothingness with nothing under your feet but what the Word of God says. Yes. So... I want us to go right now where I am talking on the subject, don't throw away your confidence. I have noticed that there's a lots of people that used to maintain their faith in God seems to be going the other direction. Anybody ever noticed that but me? You know, some of them that used to be really strong seem like they're sort of drifting off. And you know, it's important, especially in times of crisis, that we hold on to our faith. You know, Hebrews it tells us, cast not away your confidence. You know, the Apostle Paul warned us about this, though. He said in 1 Timothy 4, 1, Now the Holy Spirit tells us clearly that in the last time, some will turn away from the true faith. They will follow deceptive spirits and teachings that come from demons. The Good News Bible says it like this. The Spirit says clearly that some people will abandon their, the faith in latter times. They will obey lying spirits and follow teachings of demons. We don't have to look very far to realize this is happening right now. Many people are, are being deceived by many that are quoting the Word of God, but they're twisting it. You know, the devil quoted the Word to Jesus, but, uh, you know, the, the devil can quote the Word, but he, he always curves it where it's not, not the real truth. And... <laughs> We, we need to look at, at a question that Jesus asked in Luke 18, 8. But when the Son of Man returns, how many will he find on earth who have faith? You know, will Jesus find people that still believe? Will he find those that still believe Mark 11, 23? Actually, 24? Every one of us got to answer this ourselves. Nobody can answer it for you. You know, previous generation can't speak for you. You know, my dad can't speak for me. Only I can speak for me. I can't speak for my kids, my grandkids. You know, when I was small now, dad would believe for me. But there come a day whenever I had to start believing for myself. And you see, too many Christians sometimes, they want somebody else to do their praying and their believing for them. But in your Christian walk, it's just like our natural human walk. You know, when my kids were small and even my grandboys, and they come over that, they were small and they wanted a drink or something, I'd go get it for them. 
But when they got to a certain age, I said, hey, the refrigerator's in there. You want it? Go get it. Anybody know what I'm talking about? You know what? God expects us to do the same thing as we grow in our spiritual growth. There comes a point whenever we got to start believing for ourselves. In difficult times, we can't afford to abandon what, we, what has got us to where we are today. Many people, I, in fact, I said something to one guy, one, no, oh, it's been a while back now. Sometimes my years run together, you know, but it's been a while back. I said to him, you need to stay with what got you where you are because he was starting to, you know, to get off into some other stuff and, well, we need some, we need, we need some more revelation. We need a new doctrine. I said, you don't need nothing but the Bible. You know, too many people are searching for something new all the time. Just stay with what the Bible, if, if you read the Bible enough, you'll get something new. In fact, as you continue to read the, you can read the same scriptures, but if you'll read it with an open heart, the Holy Spirit will show you something different. I don't know how many times I've read different scriptures and I'd be reading it and all of a sudden, well, why haven't I seen that before? Well, as my dad used to say, I asked him one day, he said, you weren't ready to see that before, but because you continued to study, you put yourself in a position, now you're ready to receive that. Have you ever noticed sometimes people that are not spiritually mature, they try to get a hold of something that, that, that's a little bit too deep for them and it puts them off at the deep end? Now we ought to go back and realize that our spiritual growth is like our natural growth. As we're growing up, there are certain things that, that you, you, you don't eat until you're old, a little bit older. Hello? You know, before you have any teeth, you can't, you can't eat no steak. How many of you? How many of you have ever had a, a, a pet, like a dog? I, I like dogs. I have dogs. You know, when you first get them, you usually get them about eight weeks old, or you know, um, uh, you know, a couple months old. You know, and you have to start feeding them puppy food, and then you put them into another fat. Hey, we do that as adults. But yet, sometimes we don't understand that we need to do the same thing with our spiritual walk. Don't look at me like you think I fell out of a tree. I did, but I didn't hit my head. <laughs> See, we need to, to, to just grow with God every day. Get a hold of those little books back there that dad had put together, the faith food, we call it. I mean, you know, they're devotional, just short. Anybody got those? They're, 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 they're a tremendous help each day. Gives you a confession to start the day off with. Come on now. You know, Jesus had to encourage John the Baptist. You know, he is in prison and, uh, when he first saw Jesus, he, he, man, he blurted out, look, there's the Lamb of God. Now he's in prison, stuff not going right. He sent two of his disciples to ask him, hey, are you really the Messiah? We need to look for another one. Come on now. If, either, if even John the Baptist could get off track, then we need to realize we can too. And, you know, he was in prison. And now he is questioning. Man, there are many people that are in different kinds of prisons. 
Some people in the prison of sickness and disease. Some people in the prison of poverty and lack. Some people in the prison of fear and depression. Some people in the prison of rejection and shame, guilt, and unforgiveness. Some people are in the prison of circumstances caused by various things in their life. Some people are in the prison of tradition. And other people are in the prison of their own thoughts and their own thinking. It's not in line to the Word of God. You know, some people think if you start living for God and, and, and have this, this life of faith, it, it's a ride down easy street. Wrong. <laughs> then if it's not a ride down easy street and the enemy is coming after us, how do we deal with with the enemy when he comes after us by using our faith in what the Word of God tells us. A fellow by the name of Abraham that we're all familiar with, I think. Most of you know who Abraham was? Yeah. Yeah. I got part of the church raised their hand. The rest of them are sitting there saying, well, do I want to raise my hand or not? I know who he is, but I don't know why I want to raise my hand or not. I'm not going to ask that again because everybody would raise their hand then, you know. You know, some people just don't want to do anything like the, like the old man in the church and the pastor asked him, how many want to go to heaven? And everybody in the whole church raised their hand but him. And the pastor said, well, listen, don't you want to go to heaven? He said, yeah, I do, but I thought you was getting up a load for right now. <laughs> In Hebrews 11, 8, it says, it was by faith that Abraham obeyed when God called him to leave his home, go to another land that God would give him as an inheritance, and he went without knowing where he was going. See, that's the reason sometimes some people don't step in in faith because they can't see where the final destination is. Abraham took off following God because God said go. He believed God and he went. He didn't even know where he was going. Come on now. If you're going to, sometimes you have to, you have to take the word of God and take a, what I call a leap of faith. As my father used to say, step out over the aching void of nothingness, but nothing under your feet but the Word of God. Any of you ever heard him say that? I know most of them in this congregation have. Yeah, you see, now, in Abraham's life, man, he had all kinds of opportunities to quit and abandon faith. You know, You ever stop to think about it? His nephew, Lot, was self-centered, greedy, ungrateful, and Abraham was always having to bail him out. Anybody ever read that over there? Read the stories over there? Yeah. They was choosing up the land, and Abraham said, okay, what do you want? He took the, Lot took the best, left the junk for Abraham, and yet Abraham prospered more than he did. Abraham had to go rescue him from the kings that had taken him captive. Abraham got in trouble because his own wife gave him bad advice. He had to deal with famine and difficulty. Yet Abraham didn't give up. He was determined to believe God, what God had promised was going to come to pass. You know, we'll come through every difficulty. We'll come through every circumstance. We'll come through every situation if we'll determine to hold on to our faith in the Word of God, in what God said. You got to come back to the point that I got from my dad, and I say it all the time. He used to say it. God said it. I believe it. That settles it. 
Now, a lot of people say, well, God said it, I believe it, but they don't get to that settles it. When you put to that settles it, that means there is nothing that's going to change your mind. Nothing is going to change your mind. You know, it's sort of a trait of our family of Hagen's anyway. Uh, we, we just... We just sort of mm, put our, dig our feet in and that's it. And one of the grandsons one day, his mom said to him, said, hey, uh, you sure are stubborn. And he was real young and he said, well, what's that mean? And, he said, and she said, well, that means whenever you set your heart to do something, nothing gonna stop you. He said, yeah, I got a lot of stubborn. <laughs> that was one of my grandsons. But, you know, the problem was, uh, that's sort of like I am. Ask my wife. Once I set my course, that's it. I mean, with God, in the natural, on the ball field, wherever it is, you, you're, not gonna, you're not gonna stop me. That's the type of attitude we all have to get a hold of with our faith in God and what this word says and just, mm, that's it. Mm. I, don't, I, I don't have the words in articulate speech to try to get a hold of you what I'm trying to tell you. But it, man, it take, if you're gonna stand strong in faith, you got to get that kind of, you gotta get that attitude. That attitude, I will not quit. And I, I, I can't be defeated because I'm not gonna quit. Come on now. Anybody know what I'm talking about? You see, too many times in, we, we go along, everything going pretty good, everything, and then all of a sudden the devil hits us and we wonder why our faith is weak. Our faith is weak is because in the good times we hadn't been keeping it up. Sometimes it's only in the bad times that people start opening their Bible and reading the Word of God. You know? It takes faith to get through the difficult times. It takes faith to live victoriously. I'm talking about faith in what God said, faith in the Word of God, what the Word says. Of course, my dad, you, you'd ask him about a situation. He said, what does the Bible say? What does the Word say, son? What does the Word say? See, Paul told Timothy in 1 Timothy 1, cling to your faith in Christ. Keep your conscience clear. For some people have deliberately violated their conscience. As a result, their faith has been shipwrecked. You know, you have to, <laughs> you, got, you, got, you got to make up your mind. I'm not going to get shipwrecked. Come on. Anybody understand where I'm coming from this morning? Anybody understand why I am so hammering on this this morning? because we're in situations that we are going to have to stand our ground on the Word of God no matter what's happening around us, no matter who's, who's giving up, no matter who's quitting, no matter who's throwing in the towel. And that comes from, for you that don't realize it, that comes from the boxing ring. If, if they saw that their fighter was getting hurt, they could throw a towel in the ring and it's all over. Hey, there's some people that have, they're, they're in the middle of the battle they thrown in the towel. Just because you get knocked down is no sign you can't win the fight. You know, I remember one time in, I was, what, I don't know, I guess junior in high school, I think. And uh, the, so we was in PE class and so they was doing, we was doing boxing. So he paired us all up, tried to pair us up, you know, by our weight and our abilities and so forth. And he had me with this one guy. And so, you know, my, my cousin, George, he had fought in the, in the Golden Gloves there in Dallas. And I aspired around a little bit with him. And Uncle Dub, had he taught me and George how to fight because George was named after him. His name, we called him Dub, but his name was George Wayne Hagen. And my name is Kenneth Wayne Hagen. And so uh, 
uh, his name was George Urban Hagen. So uh, he's named after, uh, after, Uncle, uh, after Daddy and Uncle Dub, and I'm named after Daddy and Uncle Dub. So that's who we are. And so I'm, I'm, I'm messing around, you know, doing a few little do this, that, and other. And he caught me with a good one and knocked me backwards. And the guys in the, the, guys in the class said, Hagen, said, you, re, you come back, and he, she, they said he hit you four or five more times, and you just kept swinging until you knocked him out. <laughs> they said, we thought he hit you, and it, it, you didn't, it, it didn't look like it didn't even phase you. You just kept coming. They said, he hit you with his harder punch that knocked you backwards that first time, but they said, this time, he hit you harder, you still kept coming. Until you see, that's what the, that's what you got to do. I told that story, so that's what you got to do with the enemy. You got to keep coming with the word of God coming out of your mouth. Somebody said, "Well, God is in control of everything." Well, which God are you talking about? You talking about the God of this world, or are you talking about the God Most High? See. The God of this world, according to what Paul says there in uh, 2 Corinthians 4, 4, the devil is the God of this world. We have to use our faith to move the God of this world out of our lives. See, you know, Raymond's not here because I sat down and passively waited for something to happen. Raymond's here because I took a hold of what needed to Lynette and I took a hold of what needed to be done in the natural and then applied the supernatural. Raymond Bible Church is here. Not because I said it was going to happen. It's here because that I stood my ground in the face of many obstacles. In fact, when we built this building, there wasn't one like it anywhere in the world. It was state of the art. People said it couldn't be done. I said, yes, it can. They said, you couldn't build that globe up there. And I said, yes, you can. See, You've got to believe that you can do what the Word of God says you can do. You've got to believe you can receive what the Word of God says you can receive before you're ever going to get it. You've got to believe you can do it. You've got, to, you've got to come with the Word of God coming out of your mouth and swinging for the fence. God said this, Mr. Devil. God said this, Mr. Devil. Quoted the word of God to him. Tell him what the word says. Tell him you can't throw anything at me that I can't come back at you with the word. Stand strong in your faith. You have to make a decision to hold on to your faith. No one can make that decision for you. You got to make it for yourself. Don't throw away your confidence, or you could say another word, your faith in yeah. the Word of God. You have to believe what the Word says, act like what the Word of God says, yes. and you'll get what the Word of God says. But honey, if you don't know what the Word of God says, then, you know, you just you don't got, know how to have faith you, in God, do you? No, no, you got to study the Word. It says faith comes by hearing and hearing by the yes. Word. Yes, and that's what happens so many times. People do not even study what God has promised us. Uh, yes, and we have... Uh, something I think that will go along with what I'm talking about. Yes. Man's Impossibility, God's Possibility series. There's four CDs in here. Mm -hmm. I, I had a book on this, and they were, actually it's my first book. That's right. But they have never put it in, put the message into CD into forms. It's uh -huh. been in written form. And then, Dad, there's two CDs here. Hold fast to the Word. That's what, yes. that's what we're so talking, we're about. talking about. Yes, what we're talking about. That's now, right. Those two are being offered for a gift of $25 or more. So go right now to your computer, to rhema.org, yes. and, and, and order those right now. Well, guess what happens on November the 25th here at, on the Rama campus?
What happens? The Christmas lights come on. Oh, that's right. That's <laughs> it's right. It's a beautiful sight. Yes. And you know, those Christmas lights will remain on until January, the, through January the 1st, 2021. Can you believe that? 2021? Right. Yeah, when they go off about 11 o'clock on January the 1st, 2021. Yes. They're off. <laughs> that's right. And then they start taking them down. <laughs> that's right. You know, and I'm especially proud of this year because. One of our grandsons is in charge of the Christmas lights. He's in lights. charge of putting, getting the Christmas lights put up. Yes. And he's doing a great he job. He is doing an awesome, awesome, awesome job. Awesome job. Awesome job. Well, Living Faith Crusades will begin in January. Right. So I encourage you to visit rhema.org and I view uh, where we will be during this next year in our crusades. Let me give him a little preview. Okay. Uh, I've been talking to some people, and I believe in January we'll be going to Florida. Oh, that sounds good. Yes. <laughs> That's what your father said, yeah, right? Yeah. My dad always said, you go, son, go south <laughs> in the winter <laughs> and go north in, in the, the summer. In the summer. That's, <laughs> That's what he always right. told me. That's right. Oh, yes. <laughs> you know, because of you, we call you our partners. We're, we are being able to continue this broadcast all over the world. Yes. I mean, it, and you also it all, you also help us to do the, our Living Faith Crusade. Mm -hmm. You help us with all of the schools that are all over mm -hmm. the world. And somebody said, well, what is a Rhema Word Partner? Well, that's simply somebody that prays for us regularly and then sends us an offering at least yes. once a month, whatever you you can afford to send in, because when it all gets here together, some people say, well, I'd give if I had more to give. No, if everybody gives what they can when it yes. gets here, then we're able to do more and more and more to, to bring hope, hope help, help, and, and healing, healing to, to the, the world. world. If you're going to receive, you have to build up your level of faith. If your faith is not at the level where you can turn impossibilities into possibilities, you need to exercise it and build it up. Man's impossibility, God's possibility. Four newly released CDs by Kenneth W. Hagen. Prove all things. Hold fast that which is good. Amen. Somebody said, I tried that and it didn't work. Notice what it said. It said you'd have what you say. You said it didn't work, so it didn't work. Hold fast that which thou hast. Hold fast to the word. Two newly released CDs of Kenneth E. Hagen. Cling to what the Holy Spirit has said to you. All six newly released CDs can be yours today for a gift of $25 or more. So call toll free right now, 888-PRAISE-8 or log on anytime, day or night to order at rhema.org. For Canadian orders, go to rhemacanada.org. Do it today. Thank you for watching Rama Praise with Kenneth and Lynette Hagen. Kenneth, Lynette, and Rama Bible Training College are committed to reaching the entire world with the gospel of Jesus Christ and training laborers for the end time harvest. If you have prayer requests or would like more information about Rama, please call, write, or visit rama.org. Thank you for being with us today and for your faithful support. And remember, there is hope help and healing for a hurting world.